Oh man, it has been a long time back. Is that how I should say it? It's been a while, a while back regarding the last time I've seen anything of Nurse Ratchet and I am finally jumping into the first episode for this show and it's going to be filled with lobotomy that's at least what I'm expecting and um, yeah this is going to be messed up this is genuinely going to be messed up I'm expecting some gore as well I'm expecting some showcasing of an orphanage because that's part of her origin I'm also expecting a bunch of people held captive and things done to them without their permission so yeah this is going to be disgusting in many different ways guys and gals this is Core Harmonic my name is MRA and today I'm reacting to Ratchet season 1 episode 1 it's just titled pilot if you haven't already subscribed to this channel hit the notification bell smash the like button all that good stuff and check out our patreon page at patreon.com forward slash coharmonic for the full uncut reaction to this episode every first episode of every season is free for you to watch on our patreon page and if you feel like you want to see the rest of the reactions regarding this show and many other shows then consider supporting us there on our patreon page one thing that i also forgot to mention regarding this full length reaction watch along or full uncut reaction you'll have to connect your copy of the episode with my reaction to actually check this out so the picture in picture video will not be at the bottom of my reaction because of copyright reasons of course these are the reaction highlights i always do a recap regarding every second episode of any show follow us on our patreon page so that you can stay updated with everything we do there and check out our socials links are in the description down below i am taking notes and with that said enough jibber jabber let's get into this reaction right freaking now Somebody's lurking. This is 1947. Ah, will you be joining us, Father McMurtry? <coughs> <coughs> I'll stay in tonight. Thanks. It's been raining pretty hard, and I think I'm coming down with something. Suit yourself. Hello, ladies. Okay. Hi. Can I help you? Um, sure. Please, come in, dry off. Thank you very much. I love that the guy comes over as so polite. The, uh, the telephone is in the parlor if you'd like to call the garage. But still feels like such a villain. Because classically, this is what happens in, in films. And in shows. Fantastic. Just fantastic, Monsignor. That's Miracle on 31st Street. Glad you enjoyed it. I'll put on some coffee, warm us up. Oh, they're gonna find a body, aren't they? They're gonna find a freaking body. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Oh, poor guys. Hello, Monsignor. Sister Margaret McGuire. She was my mother. It's nonsense. Oh! Please, please forgive me! Please. And I go 
get sent to an orphanage. Look, you gotta understand. I'm a sinner. Now, you're gonna suffer. Oh man, this guy has to witness everything. I wonder if he was the one that wasn't part of this, you know? Like, he is the, uh, one of the innocent bystanders that got to live, you know? May I ask why you're headed to Lucia? It seems like a rather personal question now, doesn't it? Sorry. Exactly, right? <laughs> I already love her, her, her uh, personality. Everybody's up in arms. Fella cuts up a bunch of priests and they ship him up to Lucia. I have a reservation. Mildred Ratchet. Mildred. Mildred, sorry. Mildred Ratchet. I already screwed that up. Not much to look at, but we've got a phone in the office. Thank you. Is that who I think it is? Uh, I think it is, yeah. I haven't seen that actor in a while. Hello. I'm here to speak with Dr. She's Henry. like, I want that. I want that outfit. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Sir, it is a pleasure to meet you. She's rehearsing. Well, that's cool. I like the smoke coming out of it, though. Looks really nice. I I hope that it, that it has nothing to do with anything messed up. What if that's the only good thing about that place? Oh, that oh, disgusting. <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. That would be uh, that would be something indeed. Okay, one second. I'm just gonna go get a nurse. Oh, I'm sorry. You aren't a nurse. Me? No. I'm a nurse trainee. I admire nurses more than anything. They really are God's angels. Yes, yes we are. Have a nice day. Whoa, that's crazy. That's the first like tortured soul that we're getting to see. Ugh, rough. He must attend group therapy three times daily, and he must take his saltpeter tablets as prescribed. Am I understood? See, si. Nurse Bucket, you're needed at Nurses Station One. I didn't send that, and I can assure you that isn't Dr. Hanover's signature. I'll return in the afternoon. It could be longer. Well, then it could be shorter. <laughs> oh, she's such a smart ass. I love it. Don't mind waiting. I have nowhere else to be. The conflict and banter between these two. Oh, so he is a doctor. Okay. I prefer the term psychiatric rehabilitation facility. Not recovery and rehabilitation unlike any other. Now, as for the funding, I'm currently constructing a barn to be used in various therapeutic regimens. And, the people... and time's up. Looking good today, Miss Dolly? Thanks, Harold. Mm. What you up to? Just making my rounds. Is his name Charles? That is a long ass hallway, man. Like, it's a really long ass hallway. That's interesting. So this is the nurse that was uh, putting on the lipstick. So they're 
Oh, I love that. The light changing like that. Ah, oh, that was so good. That was so good. I like that kind of stuff. That that's nice. Very insistent. But I suppose if you were willing to conduct the interview right now, I could try my best to look past the insult. Your office is this way? Um, yeah, um, right this way. Oh, she's good. She's good. She's using a like reverse psychology on him, or psychology, I should say. If there's one thing I've learned, Doctor, it's that life can be quite unpredictable. Thank you for your time. Oh, damn! She's gonna make that opening. She's gonna kill somebody, isn't she? Oh my god, this is gonna be crazy. Maybe she's gonna find another way to remove a nurse. But it wouldn't surprise me. Arlene. Arlene Bauer. Oh, I'd sell my soul for a date with him. I'd let him sink his teeth into me and suck me dry, as if he really were Count Dracula. Okay. She's really going into details here and being heavily specific. And this is also terrible because, I don't know, he might kill you. They're gonna get it on. I've never done this before. What does he have in the back Actually, of his pants there? Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> I love that he understands, you know, and doesn't, you know, it's like, what? Oh, I'm leaving, you know? And I, I would completely understand if he did that. He, he would have every right. Wait, wait, where is this headed? Oh. Is she talking about her parents? I'll raise it. So she blackmails the nurse that was banging the one guy in the bathroom. For your daughter. Our hospital, I mean, your hospital, <laughs> finally getting the <laughs> This is everything I've ever wanted. We have work to do. Of course, she's, she sees it as uh, her, her uh, 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 facility as well. Mainly tamed. <laughs> and trying. <laughs> See? This is why wars are horrible, why they are such a bad idea, because these things happened back then with and, and still happen to this day where there are facilities that have to deal with the aftermath of a war. What is that bottle? <laughs> we transformed that space into a maximum security holding area where Edmund will be housed until he is evaluated. A wine cellar? Yes. Are you kidding me? Come on now! Oh, she's good. She's really good. Someone gave him the wrong medication. Hey there, mister. Governor Wilburn. How about a picture with me? Come on. Let's go. Look this way, please. Look right to the camera. There you go. Big smile. What's wrong with him? Huh? Oh, please don't put your hand on me like that. Thank you. Yeah, don't hold her like that. Get your hands off, dude. Yeah, well, he doesn't like that. Well, he can go screw himself. Well, I guess she works here now. <laughs> I had a brother. He was the only family I ever had. Well, the only family I ever knew. Anyway. That's sad. Feeling. 
You see, I was taken away from them when I was very young. The doctors and nurses here, they want to give you hope. That yeah. one day you can leave here and see your family again. And so I have to tell you that I know for a fact that they are never Mercy, going which to way? let that happen. You are going to spend the rest of your life in here. That is true. I think they're gonna... I don't... How'd he get in here? Clearly he wasn't being supervised closely enough. God damn that bucket! I will take care of this. You stand up tall and proud, you walk out of this room, face the governor, and you be quick about it. He's waiting. She has already put you in the palm of her hand. <laughs> She's gonna run this whole place, there? isn't she? Hello, Nurse Bucket. You're going to be held at Lucia State Mental Hospital for a period of 120 days. Time you are still a prisoner of the state of California will be treated as such. So the clergy killer is here. Edmund Tullison? Is that you? It's me. Is that her brother? What a plot twist. I did not, I, I was, this show knows how to keep you so focused on everything uh, that's going on right now, where you don't focus on the actual, the main plot twist, which is uh, uh, Edmund being her brother. Wow. Yes, the first discussion for what would I call this the lobotomy series the terrifying oh my god this is happening oh goodness I don't know if I can take it but yeah we got to, we got to power through so uh let's jump into this discussion we got to see Mildred Ratchet nurse Mildred Ratchet I wouldn't be surprised if after a few episodes, maybe even like the third episode or the fourth, that she just takes over from Nurse Bucket, that she becomes head nurse and eventually gets the doctor out and starts running shit. Like, I would not be surprised whatsoever. Of course getting the doctor position in that time in the 40s uh yeah it's going to be tough because there was a lot of sexism towards women there also sexism towards men but what women were going through in that time was just insane the toxicity the toxic femininity the toxic masculinity that has been coursing through many people's veins there in the 40s how do you even put that in words like that's just a term that i have used before disgusting unhealthy yeah that's what i should say they were positioned in roles that people felt like men should have roles people felt like women should have that a man can't cry that he has to be tough and angry 24-7, that he can't show emotions, that he can't do this, he can't do that, or it makes him look weak. He's not allowed to be weak, he has to be strong forever, and that a man needs to be the one that takes out the garbage and cleans the yard. Women being forced to be in the kitchen and always look good. Just imagine if of sex tapes were really a thing back then. They can't be in that 
You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff that was going on back then in the 40s. Yeah, that's really, really bad. That's so bad. And this show is not afraid to show all of that. And I love that that's the case. I love that this show is showcasing that these things happened back then and still happen now to a degree. And that these things need to be stopped. You know, that these things shouldn't happen anymore. And I gotta say, to all the women that were born in that time or were in their 20s or teens or 30s or 40s or whatever age at that time, with all the things that you went through, I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you did it. Somebody coming at your freedom like that, I don't know how you did it. I, I really don't know. You know, like I would have lost my mind. I don't know how you persevered. I don't know how you kept your head held up high and you kept going. And you've done better and you've raised better kids and you have better grandchildren and they are progressive and they don't have to go through the things that you went through back then. Like they can actually say no. Back then, women and men, a lot of things that they went through, they couldn't say no. They were forced into it by society, by their parents, by their friends, colleagues. Add word here, you know? Goodness gracious. We got to see the awesome plot twist at the end that uh, Mildred's uh, brother is... What is his name? Is it Ted? It's Ted something. He's referred to as the clergy killer. He opened up some priests and he was stabbing the crap out of those guys and and hitting the, the Nigerian uh, brother right on the, the toilet uh, seat and just chopped the guy up in the bathroom. Like, it was... Whoa. And it's because, I don't know if all of them did it, but they raped um, his mom, Margaret Maguire. So everybody that goes through mental health issues and maybe has killed someone and is going through some psychological issues gets shipped to Lucia. Another thing about Ted that I almost forgot to mention is that his mom was given morphine, sent to a whorehouse, and he was sent to an orphanage. Later on, his mom died, and he ended up alone. And I think that maybe that's the time when him and his sister got separated. Because she talked to Mr. Salvatore regarding her brother and the fact that his brother is not going to come get him. They're just going to leave him there because they deem him crazy. So many people in that time did not understand mental health and psychological issues. And this was her way of showing him mercy, which is of course not the right thing to do. But it's interesting that she went in that direction because I kind of thought also that maybe, just maybe, she would help them escape. But then I also thought about the original Nurse Ratchet. I've actually heard other messed up things, you know, just a few of them, not a lot. I don't know a lot about the real life Nurse Ratchet. So I wasn't like super surprised. I was surprised, but I wasn't super surprised that she showed him mercy in that way. But man, that scene was awesome and so bad at the same time. And she almost killed Father Mercy when he collapsed, giving him that medicine. And then she blackmailed uh, the nurse that was having sex with, I think it was a patient. I really think it was a patient in the bathroom. And she also cremated Mr. Salvatore. Is she going to keep showing more patients this version of mercy and then cremating them. So that's another thing that I'm intrigued about. Will we get to see a backstory 
like a whole flashback of what happened to her and her brother and also her parents back then? Was she trying to apply makeup and show more of her neck and chest area to fit in or to make sure that she keeps her job or make sure that she looks like the other nurses? With them applying makeup and all that kind of stuff. The governor's really confident. He's really confident in his politics. He really thinks he's gonna win. And he's also a piece of crap. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's touching every woman he sees. And thinks that that's a good thing. And I would love to see a scene where he gets slapped for that. Really would love to see it. And I think he touched Mildred in front of his own wife. Or maybe that was his assistant i'm not sure the doc just losing his mind with everything that's going on and he's taking in medicine i wonder if bucket is forcing that medicine on him and finally run the whole operation in that facility especially how she said that this is their hospital and not his hospital and that whole concept of women being nurses in the 40s that's already like sexist in itself because those were one of the only jobs that women actually got which is absolutely terrible and I am so glad that so many things have changed and for the most part that this is not the case now even though women are getting paid less and that there should be equal pay which is something that needs to happen and I am rooting for and fighting for and need to keep fighting for in the future and I also hope that more men start to realize that and start to help out is there more to Mr. Yellow Jacket I hope that we get to see more of his character he's a really good actor and I would love to see what this show is really going to do with him how they are going to explore what kind of character he actually is I love Mildred's hilarious personality she is so funny and she is so brutally honest and that one guy touching his penis as soon as he sees a man and a woman kissing each other somewhere you know and he he, he starts to play with his they, come on like seriously who does that i have a cousin and i've met a few people also that do the same thing and i'm like seriously why does your hand have to be there when you and I are having a conversation? Get your hand off your penis. I know, I know, it's your penis, but it's not something that I want to see. You know what I mean? Like, it's your dick, but it's not something that I want to see. I don't know, it's like there's this itchy feeling that they have to keep playing with it. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I haven't seen that at a woman ever before. Hopefully that never happens and I hope that I never get to see that at a guy again But when I meet people like that you and I can't hang out, bro. Like come on you and I we can't hang out like we can talk For like a second. Hey, what's up, dude? Everything okay and all that kind of stuff But we're not gonna have a long ass conversation and you're playing with your ding dong like seriously Come on. And this was my mini rant regarding that so Nurse Mildred Ratchet is going to do the night shift at Dr. Rich Richard Hanover's hospital. We also got some information that she was a nurse in war and she has experience in many different genres in that field. And I would love to see a scene with her saving many members of the military. The governor calls the psychiatric the governor calls the psychiatric rehabilitation center a loony bin. And when people say that now, this shows that there are people in the world that don't have empathy towards people suffering from mental health issues. If you have friends that are suffering regarding mental health issues and so many other things in their lives, give them a call help them by getting them to a therapist help them in some way there are many organizations there who actually take this seriously and you have no idea how beyond helpful 
you are when you have actually done something like that. Maybe you're someone that's suffering from depression and anxiety and you're crapping on somebody that's going through something that maybe seems a little bit worse than yours. How would you feel if somebody that isn't going through any of those things and you and them are friends, that they don't care about you at all, that they never try to help out in any way, and they just leave you in your own struggles. Yeah, that would suck. So if you can help out in some way, as I should do more of as well, you'll be surprised to how many lives you have saved. This is the end of the discussion. Do the classic YouTube stuff, and I will see you in the next reaction highlights, reaction video, or full uncut reaction. Bye.